So this example has a more, a little bit more realistic soil profile. We have a sand and gravel layer at the very top, then an impermeable clay layer at the middle, and then another sand gravel layer at the bottom. And for this one, we're going to calculate the effective stress at point B. So point B is at the middle of the clay layer. So this is 7.5. So it's right at the middle of the clay layer. And to calculate this effective stress at point B, as I mentioned, you can always use the effective stress equation. So we're going to do that for this example. And for this point B, given the soil profile, the geometry, and the unit weights, we can calculate the total stress pretty easily. So sigma b is the total stress. And for point b, we have five feet of sand and gravel layer, and then 7.5 feet of clay layer. So we just count for, we just count for all these soils in the total stress calculation. So total stress, again, accounts for everything on top, whether it's sand layer, clay layer, or water body. So it accounts for everything. And we have five feet of sand layer, 7.5 feet of clay layer. So the total stress, if you plug in the unit weights, 125. This is 13.75. So that's pretty easy. And the tricky part in effective stress calculation at point B is to find the pore water pressure at B. And for this given soil profile, this point B is again at the middle of that impermeable clay layer. And the way we're going to find this pore water pressure at B is to find the pore water pressure at A and at C, and then do a inter linear interpolation. And for point A, Point A is at the bottom of that top sand layer. And we know the water table is at this ground surface. So this is a water table. And if you put a sand stand pipe at point A, it's, the water is going to rise up to this surface. Basically, all the water inside the top layer is under hydrostatic condition. If you put a sand pipe, it's going to rise up to the ground surface, that free water table. And we can calculate then the pore water pressure at point A. As the height of the water column inside that stand pipe, which is basically five feet in this case, times the unit weight of water, and that's 312 PSF. Again, that water at point A is under hydrostatic condition. So it's going to rise up to the free surface. And then point C is a little bit tricky. So point C, this is at the top of the second sand layer or at the bottom of that clay layer. And if you recall what we discussed in the previous lecture, this is called the artesian condition. So this bottom sand layer is being pressed by that impermeable clay layer on top. So the water pressure inside the second layer is higher than the hydrostatic water pressure. So this is called artesian condition. So water pressure is higher in this case, but how high is this water pressure? In, if you look at this given soil profile, this sand layer is connected to an open water. So you have a water table right here. So this big channel, this sand gravel channel, acts as a natural standpipe. So basically, that's water, that's where water goes. And this is a natural standpipe. And this profile gives us a way to estimate the pore water pressure inside this sand layer, the second sand layer. So if you put a piezometer or standpipe at point C, 
it's going to rise up to this surface, the surface of this lake. The height of this lake is also given. It's 10 feet above the ground surface. So again, if you put a stand pipe here, that's how high water table rises. If you have a stand pipe at point C. So it's going to rise up to that lake surface and this total height is 30. So we can estimate the pore pressure at C using this 30 feet of water. And this is 1872. Now we have pore pressure at A and at C, then for point B, pore water pressure, we just do linear interpolation. So this UB is half of UA plus UC. And that's 1082, 1092 PSF. Now we have the total stress 1375 and then the pore water pressure 1092. The difference between these two is the effective stress. So effective stress at B is total minus pore water pressure, 283 PSF. 